Hey, AP Statistics, welcome to the second section of 5.1, uh, the pro unit on probability. This is simulation. So we're going to get into a lot of theoretical probability. We're going to calculate what are the chances of this and that. Um, but a really powerful tool is also simulation, especially with the, uh, the use of computers. So ultimately, we can imitate chance behavior um, if we have a model that accurate, accurately represents a situation. So, you know, we could roll a die, or we could simulate the rolling of a die if we know the probability of each outcome on the die is one sixth, assuming you have a fair die. Um, or if we want to simulate a number of other things, like the transmission of disease, if we know a particular probability that, you know, with a contact, you know, if we can have some sort of knowledge of the history of that, if we, if we know what's the probability of, we can maybe simulate, given a certain number of contacts, what's the probability that you'll have a transmission of disease or um, a number of processes. And once we, once we have some, some knowledge of the situation, we might be able to simulate uh, some probabilities based on that. So ultimately, that simulation process to do that, we need to have, um, uh, we're going to have a chance device to imitate one trial or repetition of the simulation uh, and tell what you will record at the uh, end of this each trial. So, you know, maybe it's something as simple as we're rolling a die and I just have some random number generator and I have a, you know, generate a one sixth probability. Um, and then I run a record maybe whether or not it was a, a success of rolling a six or something like that uh, on the die. Or maybe, a, you know, I have there's a certain chance of this, you know, transmission of disease or something like that. And so then um, we can have that trial be like, you know, what, what was the result? Was it a successful transmission? I'll use that term a lot, by the way, success. Uh, success, a lot of times, what we mean, uh, what I mean when I say that is observing whatever it is we're curious about. It doesn't necessarily mean a good thing, the, the transmission of a disease being the example where it's not necessarily a good thing, but we we'll record whether or not there was a successful transmission or or a failure to transmit. Um, and and any, any number of things that it, you can model with this. So we, we model one situation, we can model one of those, and then we repeat that many times uh, for a simulation. That's one of the really nice things about um, uh, computers is we can uh, repeat that process over and over and over and over again uh, and you know, really fast um, and it's going to save us a lot of time. If, if, I, if I was rolling dice, for instance, I could have a computer roll, you know, 100,000 dice in whatever, 60 seconds or less or whatever. Uh, that would take me a little long, long time to, to see. Um, and then we can use the results of the simulation to answer questions of interest. So if I'm interested in rolling a dice and I want to know uh, what's the probability that I roll a six in the next five tries? Right, well, we could probably actually later on in this calculate that mathematically. All right, what is you know? But we can also just simulate it. And and uh, a lot of things in reality we we can't just calculate theoretically. They're they're more complex. And so um, you know maybe we might eventually get there where we can calculate things theoretically. But um, if we can model it with simulation, that can help speed things up a lot. And so kind of the best way to do this is just to look at some examples. And, and so here's one. Uh, we're going to do a simulation. Uh, in an attempt to increase sales, a breakfast cereal company decides to offer a NASCAR promotion. Each box of cereal will contain a collectible card featuring one of the following NASCAR drivers. I don't know how to say the names. Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, Chase Elliott, Danica Patrick, or Jimmy Johnson. Uh, the company claims that each of the five cards is equally likely to appear in any box of cereal. A NASCAR fan decides to keep buying boxes of the cereal until she has all five driver's cards. Uh, she is supervised when it takes her um, 23 boxes... Uh, sorry misread that sorry surprised uh, when it takes her 23 boxes to get the full set of cards does this outcome provide convincing evidence that the five cards were not equally likely uh, to help answer this question we want to perform a simulation to estimate the probability that it will take 23 or more boxes to get a full set of five nascar collectible cards so that's what we want to calculate we, we probably could calculate theoretically what's the exact probability that it takes you know each of these outcomes you know five trials, right? It's going to take at least five trials, right? Uh, five, five boxes or six boxes. What's the probability that works out or seven. And so you could probably calculate theoretically all that, but it's actually a pretty complex computation and, and maybe we're not there. So we could do a simulation using, um, uh, you know, Basically, in this case, yeah, a, a random number generator. So describe how to use a random number generator to perform all one trial of the simulation. Um, and so, Here's their their answer to it. You can think through on your own what you might do in this case, um, but they're going to just basically use the digits one through five, 
Um, and so what they're going to do is they're going to record uh, a one, you know, is Joey, uh, two is Kevin, three is Chase, and so on. Um, and they're going to generate an amp integer between one to five to, to simulate, you know, so you could do rand it in your calculator, one comma five, to simulate buying one box of cereal and looking at which card is inside. And then you keep, you repeat that process, uh, keep generating random numbers until all five labels from one to five appear, and then record the number of boxes it takes to get all five cards. So that is one trial actually even though we had repetition of randomness in there ultimately this was one trial and we recorded the number it took so maybe you get five for five right all five the first five are all different maybe it takes you six maybe you get you know you get one two three three and then you get five and then four or something like that that took you six tries uh and then maybe you get a, a few other repeats right and you get cards you already had um and so that's what this would simulate you know if you do randint and you start over and you basically count up the number of, of trials and then again this might still take you a while to do it's easier than opening boxes of cereal but um it would take a person a while a computer can do this very quickly all right, so they did that 50 times. Um, and each of the times, so we've got dots here, uh, th this is how many trials it took them to get all five drivers. So um, we had, sometimes it took them five and six and so on. So, so explain what the dot at 20 represents. So there's a dot here. That means it took, on that trial, it took 20 different boxes of cereal or uh, it took you know 20 different um, trials to get those five unique numbers. Uh, and that's what that represents. Um, so uh, yeah, that's one one trial where it took 20 boxes to get all five driver's cards. All right, and then uh, use the results of the simulation to estimate the probability that it will take 23 or more boxes to get a full set of cards. Does this outcome provide convincing evidence that the five cards are not equally likely? So 23 trials, we did not even see happen. Uh, it, it we we had looks like 22 but it never took 23 so that was you know zero out of our 50 trials did it take that long so that's pretty unlikely and this is getting kind of at that idea of statistical significance you know did this result did this person this result is that likely just chance or is there something else going on here it's pretty unlikely that this just happened by chance so what that might make us think is that um you know, it's not all that one-fifth, and so here's their response to this. So uh, the probability uh, ultimately for that was zero out of 50, or zero. Uh, so there's about a 0% chance it would take 23 or more boxes to get a full set. Now, I realize they only did 50 trials. If we did enough trials, you'd eventually see it happen by chance, but it seems like it's really unlikely. Because it's so unlikely that it would take 23 or more boxes to get a full set, this result provides convincing evidence, you know, statistically significant evidence, um, that the five NASCAR drivers' cards are not equally likely to appear in each box of cereal. So maybe they have, you know, a certain card or something that's more rare, right? And so that would make it so it takes longer than what our simulation would have suggested. Or maybe they're just not really, really randomly distributed. Maybe, you know, a, a shipment has a bunch that are the same or something like that. And so this person, if they got all their boxes at the same place or the same, you know, next to each other or something, then maybe that threw off the results. So something is going on here where it's not exactly one-fifth every box. At least we, that's what, what, that we, what we could tell because it would be really unlikely to get 23, uh, that it would take 23 before you would have all five um, given our simulation. So uh, you look at a number of simulations in, this, in these examples and they're, and they're all you know, very, they, they vary in what they do, but it's all kind of this idea of, you know, what are the likely outcomes on those individual trials? And you can kind of start to see that over time. And that's the section 5.1.